A while back, I did a side-by-side -side experiment fermenting four different peach wines using four different types of yeast and tasted them side-by-side -side to see how the different yeast strains would impact the flavor profile. And I wanted to do that again, but now with four different randomly chosen yeast strains. And unfortunately, I decided to start those fermentations at a time when I was very busy. So those fermentations got neglected and ultimately they all spoiled. So I hope you're not sick of microscope videos. Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Vlog's Neat and let's dive right in. <laughs> We're gonna be looking at microbes under the microscope yet again and I never get sick of it. So like I said, I started four fermentations using four different types of yeast. Three of them were Saccharomyces cerevisiae that were randomly chosen. I literally shuffled packets of yeast and chose three of them randomly. Now the fourth one was my pomegranate wine yeast. This is a fission yeast along with some other microbes that are in there. You can check out uh, all about my pomegranate wine yeast here. Um, but I wanted to see how that would ferment something else besides pomegranates. And I started these fermentations and then neglected them for a few weeks. <sighs> all four of them spoiled, all four of them. And the interesting thing is all four of them spoiled in a different way. So I find that really interesting. All four of them got four different types of yeast and they all have been spoiled with various spoilage microbes. Now the reason I find this so interesting is that each fermentation came from the same batch of fruits. That means I had all those fruits that went into all four fermentations in one pot on the stove, brought that all to a boil together, all of them together. I didn't do them individually, they were all together, and then separated them into their four different jars and tossed in the four different yeast. If anyone has any ideas of like what went on, why all four of them spoiled differently, four different ways. Let me know in the comments. But let's go ahead and check out the different spoilage microbes underneath the microscope. I know I've talked about spoilage microbes in past videos, but the most common microbes that you come across are Brettanomyces. This is a spoilage yeast that usually causes a like horse blanket mouse cage smell. And then you have your lactic acid producing bacteria, most likely lactobacillus. These bacteria can produce diacetyl, which is like a buttered popcorn smell, as well as some of those caged mice smelling compounds that are also produced by Brett. And then acetic acid bacteria such as acetobacter are also really common as spoilage microbes. And they produce acetic acid, which is vinegar, smells like vinegar. They also produce acetaldehyde, which can be pretty pungent and fruity and ethereal, and ethyl acetate, which smells like nail polish remover. Now, before we dive in, I do want to say that identifying various yeast and bacteria strains under the microscope based solely on morphology is really challenging. So I'm doing my best here based on the research that I've done on spoilage microbes in wine and based on the morphologies of these various yeast and bacteria strains that are typically seen as spoilage microbes. But keep in mind, the environment that the microbes are in will also have an impact on morphology, which makes identifying them based on morphology really challenging. Nevertheless, let's dive in. First, we're going to start with this fermentation that was pitched using Lalvin Borgvin RC212. 
Now, I will say this one looks different from the other three. I This is the only one that I removed the fruits from because after a few days, I noticed that there was a little bit of a fruit fly issue. Don't tell Jerry. And I wanted to, you know, nip that in the bud right there. But the smell of this one is like musty grains along with a warm fruit cup that's been like sitting out in the sun for a day. Right away, you can see that there are mostly yeast under the microscope. Very few bacteria, and if we go to an area that's not so congested with microbes, we can start to actually make out the shape of those yeast cells. You can see that they're a little bit oval slash elongated. They're not too long by any means. These are definitely budding yeast and overall they have pretty small vacuoles. My guess based on the musty smell that I'm getting and the look of the pellicle and the shape of these yeast is that they're probably some Brett species. Brett is normally responsible for this like horse horse blanket, I feel like is what people usually say, this horse blanket or mouse cage smell. As far as the bacteria goes, it's kind of hard to identify uh, what kind of bacteria shapes there are. It looks like some spherical as well as some rod shaped bacteria. So some bacilli, probably lactobacilli, but very few and far between. There's also some larger spherical shaped yeast cells. My guess is that those are the Saccharomyces cerevisiae that I pitched. Next, we'll move on to the fermentation that had Lalvin QA23 pitched. This one smelled like stinky feet. So right away, this indicates to me that there's probably some acetobacter or at least some acetic acid bacteria present. So here there is a bunch of yeast and bacteria. The yeast are both oval as well as elongated. And I saw a few spots where there were very long hyphae, very long hyphal strands. There's also some oval shaped yeast in here as well. So it's not just these spherical yeast. <sighs> yeah. Um, my guess is that they're probably a combination of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, maybe even some Brett here. I believe that Brett can also give you some vinegar notes. However, there are some other spoilage microbes such as Zygosaccharomyces bailey that has like indistinguishable morphology to Saccharomyces cerevisiae, along with Candida and Pichia species making this Again, challenging to identify. <laughs> we can also see that there's a lot of little clusters of bacteria. For the most part, they look like they are spherical shaped. We can also see that there's some rod shaped bacteria here and also some bacteria that have very long chains. Now, I came across this area that had what looked like a mono layer of very organized and a little bit larger bacteria and these could be you know a number of things but perhaps they are pediococcus which can be slightly larger they're spherical in shape and their size can be one to two and a half microns in diameter for reference lactobacillus the thickness is usually a half to 1.2 microns or maybe it's something else so let's move on to the fermentation that was pitched using Red Star Premier Blanc. This one smells like nail polish remover. Acetic acid bacteria also produce ethyl acetate, which smells like nail polish remover. So I'm jumping ahead of myself, but perhaps there's some acetic acid bacteria in here. Lo and behold, this is just 
filled with tons and tons and tons of bacteria. But yeah, I see some rod-shaped bacteria, so some lactobacillus bacteria there. However, Glucanobacter can also have a little bit of a rod shape to it. That's an acetic acid bacteria, so. You can also see some yeast here, and those are also probably Saccharomyces cerevisiae. There's a lot of really fun channels in here too, where the bacteria are just flowing in really fun ways. So please enjoy these time lapses that I've created of various channels. <laughs> And finally, this is the experiment that was pitched using my pomegranate wine yeast. This one smelled like a really musty red wine. So before even looking under the microscope, I would also think like musty, probably a Brett species. This one had a lot of dark patches, kind of similar to what I saw um, in the experiment that was pitched using Walvin Borgavin RC212, but it also had random tints of orange, which was similar to the Lalvin QA23. When we zoom in, we can see that there are tons and tons and tons of yeast, lots of clusters of yeast. And if we move to a spot that, again, is not quite as crowded, we can make out those yeast shapes. Similar to what we saw with the experiment using RC212, there's a lot of oval shapes, slightly elongated, budding yeast here. Some of them have pretty large vacuoles, which is different from the RC212. But then some of those that have a pill shape almost seem like they have a fission line dividing them. So are those fission yeast? I'm not entirely sure, but maybe. Now I also located some actual fission yeast that were larger that resembled the yeast that I saw when we looked at the pomegranate wine under the microscope. So here we have some large schizosaccharomyces yeast. There are also some bacteria here, but this is predominantly yeast that we're seeing. Again, I really enjoy doing these videos. I wish I wasn't just looking at spoilage microbes. I wish I was looking at other interesting, really delicious microbes. However, uh, any chance I get to look at stuff under my microscope, I'm more than happy to do it. And I hope you found this information useful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And before I go, I do wanna give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel and for being a part of the neat community over on Patreon. If you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, I've got a link in the description below where you can join us over on Patreon and I would greatly appreciate it so I can do more videos videos like this. And don't forget you can also support this channel by liking and subscribing and sharing this video and other videos with your friends. Do I have anything else I want to say? It got really dark in here. Wow, I should turn on some lights.